All right, number 16 says, the sum of the reciprocals of two consecutive odd integers is 8 fifteenths. Find the integers. So let's just look at an example where we would be talking about consecutive integers. So for example, if we had 11 um, and consecutive odd integers, so that's an odd integer, the next integer would be not 12, but 13, right? So really what we're done, we've done is we've added two to get to the next one, okay? Um, what would the reciprocal of those be? Well, for any integer, okay, that's a fraction over one. So the reciprocal would just be one over 11. And then so we'd have one over 13. So rather than do a trial and error where we keep narrowing down, we're gonna do a set up an equation here. So we're going to set a let statement. So let's say let x be, and usually we want to make it this, we could make it the larger, and then um, we say x is the larger integer, and then x minus 2 would be the smaller. But I would usually say let x be the smaller uh, integer, okay? I don't need to say odd integer. I mean, we basically set it up. So let me go back to the black one. I'll set this up. So if that's the case, we're saying that the sum, so if we add them together, the sum of the reciprocal. So if, if x is the number, 1 over x would be the reciprocal. Okay, and then, oh, I didn't make a let statement for the larger um, number. So, and we'll say, and let x plus 2 be the larger. Okay, so we've established that. All right. All right, so let's get this equation on its way. Uh, so if that's x plus 2 is the larger integer 1 over x plus 2 uh, would have to be the reciprocal of that. And we know the sum of the reciprocals is 8 15ths. Okay, so let's just double check that. We said that our the first integer was x, so that means the next one is x plus 2 because they're odd. They're two apart. And the reciprocals of those are shown here because 1 over x is the reciprocal of x, and same here. And we're saying the sum of those is equal to 8 15 So it looks like we've got it. Um, if this is an equation that has fractions in it, we want to find out the lowest common denominator or multiple of the denominators in order to clear out that fraction, okay? So what is the LCD? Um, well, the, this is prime. We can't factor. Here we got this prime here, and this is not prime, but there are no common factors. So we're just going to have to say 15x times x plus 2. That is the lowest common multiple all the denominators. So I'm going to have to multiply every part by that. And by doing that, we're just going to not have any more fractions to deal with. Okay, so 15x times x plus 2. And same here, 15x times x plus 2. And here we have 15x times x plus 2. So some things obviously are going to simplify. So um, we have x and x, okay. x plus 2 and x plus 2 here. And we've got 15 here and 15 here. So what do we have? Well, we have 15 times x plus 2 plus, and then this is nice again, too. 15x equals um, 8x times x plus 2. Uh, let's go ahead and expand that, see what we can do to simplify. So if we um, distribute here, okay, so we're going to distribute, uh, same thing here. This is already finished, so 15x plus plus 30, oops, what happened there? Made a three and it gave me a one. Plus 30, 
and plus 15x is equal to 8x squared plus 16x. All right, so, you know, I see that I'm going to have uh, x squared on this side, so I think it's better if I just go ahead and subtract. Um, well, I'm going to subtract 30x from this side because that's what I have there, and I'm going to subtract 30. So by doing that, um, let's see, I will have 0 on this side, right? It's equal to 8x squared. Um, uh, let's see if I subtract 30x there, it'll be minus 24x. And then that looks like just minus 30. Okay. That looks pretty good. Um, yeah. Is that 24 or 14x? Let me fix that. It's only 14x. Okay. Okay, double check that. So we subtracted um 30x from 16x yeah yeah okay and we subtracted 30 that should be good okay so now um i'm just gonna set it see if i can factor it so are there any common factors i see two they're all even or no so two so we have 4x squared okay minus 7x minus 15 all of that is equal to zero okay now we could go ahead and mess around and try to factor this so one of the ways that we could do this one strategy is um that i could say okay so i've got two and then you know, let's see if i can factor this and make it equal to zero so i'm gonna i could start with saying oh, i'm gonna make this 2x and this 2x and then I know the product has to be 15, so I keep messing with it. I can make it so that it's a say, or I can start and say, I'm going to go with 4x and 1 and just x, okay? And we could do that. But what I want to do is I want to show, what, what if we did this idea of splitting? Okay, so if I split the middle, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a product of 4, so this number here, and this number here, so 4x squared and negative 15. So that product would be negative 60, right? And then, so that's the product. And then the sum would have to be negative 7. So we want to split this so we can factor by grouping. Yeah, it's not the only way to do this, but you know, just, it's just an opportunity for me to show that example. So what, what, what can give us a product of 60? Okay, there's lots of things like uh, 15 and 4, okay? Let me just list some of the pairs. So we could go with like uh, 15 and 4. Is there any way we can make that have a sum of negative 7? Doesn't seem like it. Uh, how about what else could we do? Let's see. Um, 5 and 5 times 12. Would that work? Yes. I think 5 and 12 is going to work. Okay, so perfect. Let me just go ahead and erase this part here. Um, okay, so I'm gonna rewrite it then. Uh, so now I'm just gonna rewrite it as 4x squared. And then, so it would have to be minus 12, right? And plus five, uh, minus 12x plus 5x minus 15. Okay, so really what we've done is we've written the same thing down here. And then we can try factoring it by grouping it, right? So if we go ahead and group those parts there, so uh, let's try to pick a different color. So we're going to group it. So we've got this part here plus this part here, and we take the common factors out of those. All right, so here we have uh, two times, and now what's the common factor of 4x squared and 12x? So we just have 4x, right? So 4x times x minus 3 plus, what's the common factor of 5x and negative 15? That's easy, that's 5. So we have x minus 3. And then see, we have that common factor. It's 
a binomial. So this is our common factor here, right? So uh, let's factor out the common factor. So we have two times, okay? So we've got uh, x minus three times four x plus five equals zero, okay? So using the zero product uh, property, okay, um, either this has to be zero or this part has to be zero. Now, if, if we make this part zero, you can see it's not going to be an integer. So that it's not an integer. I saw that right away, but you know, you could play with, you could go ahead and try it. So that means that X has to be equal to three. That is an odd integer. So because that we said, because we said before that this is the smaller integer, uh, the integers, the um, odd integers are three, and then the next one is five. We can check that. Let's check it. That's something you should always do um, because it's easy to make a mistake. So we said the reciprocals, or that's what it said, the reciprocals of two of these two consecutive odd integers is equal to 8 fifteenths. And so we need fifteenths as a denominator. It's looking pretty good right now. So I have to times this by 5. So 5. Okay, and then this will be times by 3. So that would be 5 fifteenths plus 3 fifteenths, which is 8 fifteenths. So yes, it works.